and always busy, people smiling, people laughing heartily when it's time for the fan favorite segment, the fan zone, especially when Joe Saina is making to the show after some little bit of suspension and Ronald Okoth, whose suspension has also been lifted. <laughs> they are back. <laughs> of course, Osoro Robert is still here with me. Gentlemen, good to have you on board. International football is our focus. But Ronald Okoth, how have you been, man? I've been okay, and you? Easy, I've been all right. Okay. Good to see you. Good to see you in good state of health and good to see you uh, really cheering at Gormaya uh, <laughs> stakeholders. You must be uh, loyal to the team you played for before, right? Yeah, you know, once, you're once you go green, you can never go back. So, <laughs> once a green, always a green. And AC Roma tweeted something nice about, yeah, about your former club, Mother United, United, as well yesterday. Yeah, as usual, you know, Mother United, we have a, a motto that says greatness within. And so, we are, we are also surprised when a team like AC Roma recognize Mother United. So, you know, it's a huge feat, and I, I'm sure we are going to screenshot that uh, tweet and maybe hang it somewhere in the office. <laughs> <laughs> you being a poster boy. <laughs> Joe, well deserved. Well deserved. Glad to have you on board. How is Naro? Naro is doing good. He's, he's doing well. Heavy downpour, the same way we're experiencing the same in Nairobi. Yeah, the opposite. We live in a different country. Yeah, it's just hot, hot, hot. But I can see you still doing an amazing job the other side, trying to put in place measures to see that Chapadimba is successful. It's back and uh, it will be kicking off soon, right? Yes, yes. We're, 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 trying, we're trying to pull in some few mentorship programs to go with it. And obviously, once the final details come through, I will uh, obviously inform everyone else about it. Osoro Robert, you're still with us, and uh, what do you make of that interview you've just had with Gunmaya Football Club? They are saying that they are roaring, and probably they will defy all odds to pull a surprise and beat Everton. Possible or just ambition? Uh, it's a good ambition. You know, <laughs> when you're going to play against Everton, you're going to play with that team on another level. Yes. The British Premier League is one of the best clubs in one of the best managed leagues, one of the best developmental sides leagues you can see around. And for Gormaya to get that chance is good for their players. Also, their management will learn some one or two with Everton here and there. And it is just good morale for the team. You know, being an African team, traveling all the way to Everton, because you know, these are players who will just, after their football match, will go actually sit down and watch Everton play Manchester United. So. It is good for them to go and learn from the best. I don't think a win is their core, it's their main thing, going to Everton. The, the, that experience, yeah, exposure, the, yeah, that's and the, mingling yeah, with those players is the, also is the best. Oh, good thing. Yeah. Straight into what happened in the midweek, UEFA Champions League football. Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo and Paul Pogba playing against uh, uh, their former clubs and that game ending 1-0 in favor of Juventus and Cristiano and Jose Mourinho, the Portuguese international, the tactician for United, as usual, uh, saying what people, of course, expected of him, mm -hmm. that uh, uh, Juventus' defense can go to Harvard and lecture mm -hmm. on the good defending. <laughs> Ronaldo Koth, <laughs> you were picking points from that time. Did well, Ronaldo, was he too much lenient to try please United fans? Well, I don't think he was lenient as such, but I think we must give credit to the Manchester United defence because I think they did well to try and tame him. Because I, I know one thing Cristiano Ronaldo went there to do was to try and score a goal at his whole, at his old play, at, at his old home. But uh, overall, he had a good performance, even though Juventus were the better side and Manchester United. I think they still have a lot to do because you know they losing at home and now again they'll be going to play at Juve, at, uh, away at Juventus. It don't, it don't, don't be an easy match, but uh, looking at the whole game, the whole scenario, I think Juventus were the better side and they deteriorated the game prop, uh, so well. And even their defense, they have you know they have a good defense, and that's one one characteristic of Italian teams plus the Italian national team. They normally produce some very good defenders, so I think uh, they gave a good account of themselves. And looking forward that they maybe return fixture when the Manchester United will be traveling away to Juventus, they la they have a lot of work to do to break that defense line. Joe, mm -hmm. objectivity. And impartiality is the key on this show. I yes. know you are a Man United <laughs> fan. <laughs> but will you agree with Ronald that uh, Juventus was the best team and uh, they deserved victory? Yes. Though your defense, to some extent, uh, tried so much to contain Cristiano Ronaldo, Ashley Young doing what he does better. Yes, but you know we have to look at it critically from the previous game against Chelsea. You know, if, the, if that game Manchester United would have won, you know, they could have taken the momentum 
towards the game against Juventus. Juventus came prepared. Again, the defense, uh, Bonucci and Chiellini, although there was a one-year break whereby Bonucci went to AC Milan and came back, that, that solidity, not only at club level, but also, also at national level, has helped them a lot. Uh, looking at it, uh, obviously, from uh, Ronaldo's perspective, this was a game that whether he would score or not, he would contribute heavily. Because again, he wants to prove something different in Juventus. So Juventus came with a game plan. For us, for Manchester United, unfortunately, um, the momentum was lost during the Chelsea game. That's first. Secondly, the link up again between Lukaku and Pogba for midfield to attacking was not that great. Lukaku again has been dipping in form. Uh, again, all great players dip in form at some point, but let's hope uh, the form comes back quite quick. Um, for the defense, again, I don't think Mourinho knows his, his, his two central defenders, like his starting central defenders for every game. I don't think yet he's really mastered that. And again, talks of De Gea not extending his contract, you know, doesn't, that doesn't pull a lot in terms of uh, what's happening in Manchester United. I, I think uh, between Juventus and Manchester United, it was a case of two teams. One team that has found themselves and one team that is trying to find themselves. Yeah, you look at Juventus, these are couple of players who have played together, a coach has mastered, he brings in his own players, goes out there to buy and put them in a team and to go and play football. But when you look at Manchester United, you realize that Jose Mourinho is having three sets of players. You've got the Sir Alex Ferguson players that were left there. You've got the David Moyes players that he came with. You've got the Luis Van Gaal players and now Jose Mourinho players. So trying to find a team in all that, I think it's been tough for him. Even if of late, after the international break, he's been a little bit calm. He's not shouting to the players and the press and all that, trying to bring that out. I think that's where the disconnect comes in for Manchester United. But for Juventus, they are a compact and perfect team going ahead. Another clash that, you know, whose outcome, you know, uh, many people didn't agree with it is Atletico Madrid against Borussia Dortmund. Uh, the German side, the Bundesliga side, beating the Spanish side by four goals to need. Did you look forward to that? Well, I, uh, to me, I didn't expect uh, Atletico Madrid to lose by such a big margin. But, uh, you know, as much as, they've lo uh, as much as they lost with a huge margin, we, uh, we must give credit to it's due. The, the, the German side, they were the, they were the better team. And I think uh, Atletico Madrid, they have a lot of work to do when they'll be facing them again because, you know, or maybe in the, in the, in the, in the next matches because, uh, you know, when you lose by such a big margin when you're going into the next game, it, it, it really disorganizes you mentally. So I think they'll be looking to break, to, to bounce back in the next match. But uh, having said that, I think uh, congratulations to Dortmund side. They did a good job. They did their homework well and they got Atletico where they wanted them. Diego Simeone has been too loyal to Atletico. Do you think it's high time now he gets another challenge elsewhere? I think the major challenge for him right now before he looks for another club is the set of players that he has. He's been having these players for about um, th three seasons now. Yes. Three seasons, well, not even three. I think, I think four seasons. Four. Okay. Yeah. Especially the link up in the midfield and the defense with Godin and the Cockers. I think the idea right now is to make sure that he can try and see how he can bring in new players. Sometimes a transfer market can be bad to you because maybe not of the additional funds that you need. But if you can bring guys from the youth system, whereby now Atletico can start refining these players. Because yes, he might get he may he may get another chance. He may go to one of your favorite clubs, PSG. He might go to. Uh, Manchester United, he may go to, you know, some talks also to AC Milan because Gattuso is having a problem there. But again, the legacy he wants to leave behind at Atletico Madrid is what? A pressure team. Does he want to be referred to another Tottenham? No, 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 no. I think he can work better in, in, in uh, Atletico Madrid and just try again to refine that squad. Uh, the, the challenge you'll be having is to change a generation of a team. Because you've been there long enough, and one of the key things that Alex Ferguson, the wingers of this world, had was changing a team to another team. You have a set, a kind set of players you have who have been there long enough. The other guys you're bringing in, what are they bringing into the team? Because you're playing with Godin for four or five years. Borussia Dortmund knows that. Their video analyst will tell you his best moves and his worst moves. You have Koke, Sol in that midfield, Carrasco. They already know your best moves and everything. So the new players you're bringing in, what difference are they going to bring into Atletico Madrid? And for me in that game, I think it was a case of Atletico Madrid thinking they were superior 
to Borussia Dortmund because Borussia Dortmund came out with really young kids into that game, the likes of Sacho, Nacho, the, the new English player. Yes, and Sancho. Yeah, those guys, that kid and the other kids there were proving to themselves that we, we are actually at the big stage and we can get Borussia Dortmund back to the big stage. Of course, another development as far as international football is concerned is Wayne Mark Rooney, 31 year old international. He celebrated his birthday, I think on Wednesday last week, mm -hmm. and he's currently with DC United in the United States, and he's been in prolific form, you know, scoring several goals for them that, had, that have earned them, you know, playoffs. Mm -hmm. You see how that uh, uh, premiership of US operates, not like English Premier League or Bundesliga or La Liga. Mm -hmm. But Wayne Mark Rooney, was it? Too early for Man United to part ways with him? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think it was too early because yeah. if you look at uh, the, dy the dynamics of Engl English English Premier League, once you get to your prime age, that is, I think, 31, your yes. two late years, 31, 32, yeah. you're, already, you're, you're already out of the team. Yeah. Most coaches Cristiano won't... Cristiano Ronaldo is 33, but, 32, but, uh, around but, uh, there, but he's, he's... He's around that age, but you know he's an exceptional player. He's yeah. not like, uh, all the, like Messi. I think Messi is almost 30. Yes, but you know there, those are, those are two exceptional players. Those, you can't rule them out. But if you look at uh, maybe a, a player like Wayne Rooney, much has been said that uh, maybe he couldn't perform well when he got he, he had reached his peak. But if you look at the way now he's performing in his club back in the US, I think he's doing a, a, a really good job. And it, it only proved that maybe form may be temporary, but you know class is permanent, and he's really proving that. <laughs> As Man United fan, do you think uh, uh, his rejuvenated career, his rejuvenated form? And uh, the predicaments you're going through as far as your attacking department is concerned, uh, cut us off from Elu Lukaku, who said that Man United teammates are yet to understand this kind of play. Mm -hmm. Because when he's featuring for the national team, the Red Devils of Belgium, mm -hmm. he's scoring, but at club level, awful show. Do you think Rooney could have come in handy? Well, I think from an experience perspective, yes, it will have come in handy. Um, I think a short, a short loan spell would really welcome it. Um, that being said, again, there's this culture in the Premier League whereby uh, whether whether a class is permanent, age is a big factor, unfortunately. And the Premier League has been losing quality players through this. We have seen even the likes of Van Pass. We have seen the likes of uh, um, Zlatan Ibrahimovic. We have seen Yaya Toure going away. And again, you know, they still they still give they they can still give you a good two to three seasons. The sports science in, in the English Premier League is far, far, by far really unfair in terms of the technical abilities of some of these players. And case in point, that is what, um, you know, Rooney is sparkling DC United. And yet, you know, he, he could run, you know, 40 or so yards behind, come and defend a ball and again assist in a goal. His free kicks are amazing. I mean, I'm sure we'll need a free kick. I'm sure we'll need a defensive attacking player. So it's, it's neither here nor there. <laughs> <laughs> Over to Soro. You know, yeah. you know very well my love for Wayne Rooney is unrivaled. He's one man yeah. I admire very much. Yeah. <laughs> Despite the fact that I don't support Man United, yeah. <laughs> my team is Nottingham Forest, two time UEFA Champions League winner. But Wayne Mark Rooney is my man. And uh, I, I think I'll go with Rod, uh, what Ronald said the yes. dynamics of the leagues are different. Well, Rooney at England was the best. And if you look at the, what the MLS has been doing all year long, it's trying to get these best players who are in the prime of their careers and they're done to come and elevate the MLS. Now, did you know this United before Rooney went there? No. <laughs> no. Now, you see, it's a team that was at the bottom of the log in their conference. Now, Rooney going there and they have scored 10 goals in the 17 match. It was expected. You look at the kind of players he's playing against. The other English players, players who are there who left the England is the former American player Bradley who yeah. is also there. You look at let's say Dave Devere who is also there. Zlatan so, is also. Yeah. So you realize that they are still work in progress in the MLS and Wayne Rooney is just showing them the kind of football they could have if they were having the best kind of players because for him he has played the best of the best of football and he has gone to a league that I can say is amateur for him. This guy is expected to talk the way he's spoken of <laughs> Wayne Rooney <laughs> because, <laughs> because, <laughs> because, 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 is you see, anything, anything, anything associated with England, he hates them and he even hated three lions during FIFA World Cup. So, he's expected to speak the way he's spoken I'm just of Wayne that, Mark Rooney, I'm just my saying that favorite. If you compare the football in America and the football in England or yeah. in Spain or in Germany, is totally different. different. The football in England, 
is really on a higher level. You look at even how many players past the age of 30 in, who are in England and also in the MLS. Yeah. There are very few. You realize that the players, who, let's say even past 35, Karaga, Ryan Giggs, and now we have Milner. Milner. Those are actually exceptional players. But you look at Wayne Rooney, at his age of 31, he was not sparkling at all. But the moment he hit the MLS, he's up there. So yes, he has helped this United, but the leagues are totally different. The leagues are totally different. Yeah. Something else, another development, uh, Robin Van Persie has announced that he will retire from international football. He currently features in their uh, Dutch league with Feyenoord, and he said that he will be quitting football. And you see papers, bloggers, and uh, even these publications referring to him as Man United icon. <laughs> Yet... <laughs> He prominently featured for Arsenal <laughs> better than he did for Man United. Is well, it because of trophy? Well, I think probably maybe the bloggers or the writers have Manchester United partisan fans. Interest. Yeah, they have oh, partisan no. interest. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but we can't we can't we can't rule out anything that uh, Manchester United did to him because I think that's where he won his trophy. So, but him retiring at that age, I think he's done a lot for the football world and um, he has a lot of following all over the world. And so I think maybe time has come for him to hang his boots. And maybe now go into another, get involved in football in another perspective altogether. But uh, he's a legend of the game, and most of us who celebrate him, some of us have looked up to him because uh, we've. Ne I think uh, maybe after Thierry Henry, we've never seen another striker who did well at Arsenal like Robin van Pass because I think he gave out, he gave out his all for the team. So I think uh, it, uh, it has come at uh, it has come at a good time for him, and also you know he's retiring while he's back at home. So it's come at a good time, and most of us we celebrate him and we appreciate him for the good work he's done. Do you think Do you think Robin van Persie, RVP, was one of the Dutch finest players? Of course, alongside people like Patrick Kluivert, who is now assistant coach to Clarence Seedorf mm -hmm. at the Cameroon. Do you think he was on another level? Was he world class? He was world class. You know, you can put him in the category of Johan Cruyff. You can put him in the category of Patrick Kluivert. You can put him at, at, at the category of Dark Kite. And um, it's sad that he's retiring. Again, um, he did put a shift for Arsenal. But again, to replace someone like Henry at Arsenal was going to be a problem. Okay, and when he came to Manchester United, he found a Manchester United that did not have quality strikers. Dimitar Babatov was not hitting the targets. Rooney was, had already come back to become an attacking midfielder. So for him, it was easy access to score these goals. And um, though the trophy has made Van Persie being called a Manchester legend, but I think again, to Ronald's point, his contribution to Arsenal was critical for him to come to the limelight. We cannot disregard what he did in Arsenal. Although injuries, you know, prevented him to, to get to where he's supposed to be at Arsenal, but he did give a good shift at Arsenal. Robert Osoro, do you think these uh, exceptional players who don't win silverware with their respective clubs, it's high time probably they join a team where they stand a chance of winning a trophy so that when they retire at least they have something <laughs> to be proud of. Because we've seen, we've seen several players who played alongside Robin Van Persie at Arsenal, but they are, of course, loyalty to Arsenal Football Club and Wavering and they stuck there and now they will be quitting football without a trophy. Mm -hmm. And like Van Persie, who joined United, I, I, Cesc I Fabregas, who joined Barcelona, he has a trophy. Yeah. So, Champions I, League, I, I La Liga, think, Alexander Belongsong. Ronald is better <laughs> equipped to answer that <laughs> question. <laughs> because he played football and actually knows everything a player does is to win the trophy. Yeah. Come what may. And it has been happening there in history. Everything a player does, you the moment you put that shirt on and you go into the field of play, at the end of the day, your target is how you are going to win that trophy. You don't want to go back into your football career and you don't have any trophy, no matter how good you are. Uh, and now, and now <laughs> while, while Robert Osoro, <laughs> while saying that, yeah. you bring us to the fact that this uh, fashionista <laughs> 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 did some roaming <laughs> from this club to another one and eventually joined Gormaya oh yeah, he won a KPL trophy with them in 2013. Yeah, yes? 2013. No. Yeah. So that might be the reason. Well, 
just uh, just like Robert said, that that's actually the reason. That's why you, you've seen good players like F Philemon moving from Ushuru to Gormaya. We've yeah. seen Jackie Strisenge moving from uh, his club in Rwanda to Gormaya. We've seen Medica Gere moving from his club, his club to Rwanda. That's why, basically, that's why we see all these good players in the league. They want to move to these bigger yes. teams and more so the ones that are winning trophies. That's why you've seen the likes of Lukaku moving from Everton to Manchester United because he thought we, he will win a trophy them. Yes. We've seen, we <laughs> 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 we've seen okay. Alexander Song leaving. Arsenal, yeah. going yeah. to Barcelona, yeah. Fabregas leaving Arsenal, actually, going to Barcelona. You, you saw it actually in and the biggest rivalry of English football, that yeah. is Liverpool and Manchester United. Michael Owen left Liverpool, went to Real Madrid yeah. and came back to Manchester United and, for, and, and, for just that and, one. And as we speak, the, yeah. the rumors are going around that uh, Alexis Sanchez is ready to quit Manchester United at the end yeah. of the season to join PSG. Yeah. Because I think he wants to go and league, win uh, maybe a trophy yeah. with, yeah. The, with the PSG. <laughs> so I think basically that, that's the motivation. Yeah. And as a pillar, when you are when you're at your peak, you're performing at the best, that's the best time maybe to go move out to another team mm -hmm. that you think has a potential to maybe take you to another whole level in your career. Finally, time not on our side. We're almost winding up El Clasico tomorrow. Or oh, a titanic clash, breathtaking showdown. But for the first time since 2007, Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi missing in action. Messi injured on the sidelines. Ronaldo, of course, having joined the Italian league and now uh, uh, an old lady mm -hmm. player. That uh, mileage, do you think the fixture will be a little bit colorless? No, 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 it won't be because I believe now the battle now will go to the midfield. In Barcelona, you have Sergio Busquets, you have Arturo Vidal, you have Rakitic. Then you come to the other side, you Tony come to Cruz, Luka Modric. Thank Tony Cruz, Luka, Luka Modric, and Casemiro. Again, we still have PK versus Ramos. We, we still have the iconic the iconic duels, but I know it will come down to performance. It will come down to form. And Barcelona has been having a better form, pound for pound, against Real Madrid in the in the in this in this season. Real Madrid has been losing some very questionable games, and Barcelona has been picking up points. So I think Barcelona can edge them tomorrow. As we also speak about uh, the derby, remember today we have the Soweto derby, Kaiser Chiefs versus Orlando, Orlando Pirates. Pirates. It's going to be a very entertaining game, and I don't know your pick. For me, I think Kaiser Chiefs are going to take it. <laughs> I don't know about you. I don't know about your score. <laughs> Joe, Joe, you see, you see, let, let, me, let me respond on their behalf, two of them. <laughs> you see, by the fact that he's a former player yeah. uh, for Gormaya, yeah. and he's a Gormaya supporter, <laughs> that automatically means they will support Kaiser Chiefs, oh, because yeah. One of Gormaya former player left back, <laughs> Godfrey Wadisimbi, is yes, featuring yes. for them. Oh, for the Kaiser Chiefs, eh? Have I got any trouble? I'm a big Pirates fan. Uh, yeah. you, oh, you're a Pirates fan? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So but but, but like Osoro, uh, yeah. dynamics of El Clasico tomorrow? Uh, 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 that is a, it's 116 years old. That <laughs> game going to be played tomorrow. It's a big game all over the world. Ronaldo and Messi not featuring, it's a big deal for them not to be there because for 11 years now, those guys have been the main topic <coughs> when that game goes on. But I think for tomorrow's game, it will be a make or break it for the Real Madrid coach, Lopete Guit. It's actually one game that will make him stay at Real Madrid or will make him leave Real Madrid. And for anyone who is putting their cards on the table, I'll be going with Barcelona for that one. These rumor mills, finally, some of them mm -hmm. always come to pass. Of course, the rumor mill has it that probably Jose might return to Santiago Bernabéu, though it's something that is uh, refuted his night, uh, the claim saying that he's at Old Trafford to finish his contract. Well, in, in football, I don't think you can, you can rule out rumors. Because when you in, in football, when you hear rumors, it's definitely bound to happen. And uh, if you look at uh, the Real Madrid coach right now, I think he's a lot, under a lot of pressure because he's lost, he's lost a lot of games. And uh, if a club like Real Madrid, they don't uh, lose a lot of games like that. So that's why I think he's, uh, his job is under pressure. There, there were rumors that he was supposed to be fired the previous weekend, but I think probably the game against uh, Barcelona, that's, that will be the decider. It's a must win for him. And uh, looking at that game, I think the battle to me will be at the midfield because, you know, for, for 11 years now, we are having an El Clasico without Messi or Ronaldo. Yeah. So we're about to see a whole, di a whole different El Clasico, but I don't think it will be short of fireworks because both teams have both uh, both teams have sets of, quali sets of quality players at the front. They have the likes of Suarez, Barcelona, and uh, Madrid, they, 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 they have the likes of Benzema 
at, at, in the middle of the park. There'll be a battle between Rakitic and his former teammate, that is Modric. No, his, his teammate at the national, 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 national level, yeah. Modric. So I think uh, we're looking forward to a good game, and uh, this game will be decided whether the Madrid coach will stay or not. No time to discuss English Premier League football, but your team, Man City, winning the league, retaining it? Uh, definitely, without a doubt, hands down, because, you know, right now, that, that, the, no team can challenge them, because, you know, they have depth in the team, they have Liverpool quality can. in the team. Maybe Liverpool, but I don't think right now any team that has the capability of maybe taking Manchester City all the way to the core. Unless maybe Liverpool fight for the position two, three, but f position one, I think it's already written down. Guaranteed. Yeah. Your team uh, will be playing Everton tomorrow, and Everton are using that fixture to prepare for Bormaya. <laughs> <laughs> Come November 6th. <laughs> uh, first of all, yeah, I don't understand how our team Wednesday night has become a training, training partner <laughs> for Everton against Gormaya. So for the Gormaya fans who are listening to this, yeah, be very happy that we are going to soften Everton for you guys, okay? Because Manchester is going to win. <laughs> you will win tomorrow. Yes, yeah. Manchester United definitely is going to win. Uh, Liverpool again against Cardiff. Liverpool is going to take the three points. I, I think that that had the, the first three teams. It will go down to good difference at the end of the season. Don't remember that. Yeah. EPL season overally, what do you make of its progress, its run? Oh, it will race to the wire or two horse race I, I City and I Liverpool? I don't think it will go to the wire because uh, when we look at midway class of Manchester City in the Champions League and look at the way they were playing in the counter-attack, the new dimensions they bring into the game, they look at a team that everyone is going to fight to get into the trophy. One team that I know is not on the top there at the moment is Manchester United. And I can tell you for free, <laughs> by the time we get to round 12 or 13, yes. the conversation will be Manchester United, will they finish in the top four? Because now you are already off the mark in 11 or 12 points. Touchline is the show always doing this every Saturday, one to three, keeping it sporty, talking about matters local and international sports across all disciplines. This has been the fans on the fan favorite segment where we discuss international football right here after here, straight uh, the Impala grounds where, of course, the flood is finally happening this evening at 7 p.m. You don't want to miss that. Tomorrow, El Clasico, Real Madrid and Barcelona. Keep part of the conversation. What do you think? Hashtag touchline Y254 Atosoro, Atosoro Bats at Wasike Maxwell. Repeat of the show, of course, tomorrow at 3 p.m. East African time. Always a pleasure doing this. Stay tuned and keep it sporty. Have a fantastic weekend. Enjoy. Bless.